So for today's video, I think we're going to try and turn this mess of speaker components into a nice PC speaker setup that will sit above my computer so I don't have to listen on headphones anymore. So, first things first, uh, I think I'm going to try with these two speakers to get a distance that's not measured that just seems right. So I think about there. And then let's just round that up to an even, there you go, four, four inches-ish. So we'll call that part four inches tall. I think speakers being about that far apart doesn't look too bad. I wanted space in the middle for a button and I needed space for some components sort of behind the speakers as well. about 33mm and I'm going to bring the edge of the speaker to an inch and a half in I know I'm changing from metric to imperial a lot that's just how my mind works Good. The way I look at it, if I look at that from the front, that will look pretty good. Right, so now I'm going to find the centre of these speakers with uh, a pair of calipers, which is probably a bit overkill, but whatever. And then I will mark that down on here from that far in. And then I can draw the holes with a hole saw that will match the size of that. And I can mark out whereabouts I want to screw these in. So I've marked over from my line where the centre of the speakers are and I know you could do it with a tape measure but I have this cool old fashioned sort of centre finder and then this will just help me find the centre of the whole board and I can draw a line through that and there's the centre of the speaker right here. And on the other side, on the other side, holding that down. And where the two lines cross will be the centre of the board. So I've got a hole saw bit set up that is about the size of the speaker on the inside. Uh, I've marked out the holes for my drill to go into a bit easier. And I will drill these holes and show you after where these will line up. And from there I can look on the other side and sort of centre my speaker better. So to get start drilling the hole I've clamped it down a bit. It's not fully secure but it should be enough just to keep it where it is. Right, there is one. Oh, that is very hot. There's one done. Just gonna quickly move that up. Yeah, 
it sounds as if my drill is going to need a quick charge so I'm going to quickly do that, give it a 10 minute charge and I should be able to do the next hole right, time to drill the second hole <laughs> So this is probably by far my most shameful bit of workshop equipment. Uh, I've got a Trend T4 router that uh, I just tried to record a clip and the mechanism for lifting is broken so I've had to fix it in place. But this is just an old desk cupboard. It works for now so I'm just going to route a small chamfer, sort of rounded edge, onto these circles to make the front look a bit better. So as you can see it's just taken the top edge off and made that bit more of a rounded circle and I can clean the edges up with some sandpaper. Right, so now I have my front piece with the two holes for the speakers in it. Uh, I'm starting to think I cut it a bit too close to the edge. Uh, I feel like they could have been in a bit further but thinking about it, it actually is going to be okay. And then I've got this scrap piece that I think I'm going to use for the sides. And I'm just going to come out a few uh, centimetres, up a few centimetres and meet him in the middle with a 45 degree. So I think, looking at how deep the speakers are, I will only need a few centimetres of straight and then an added few centimetres for the depth of this box so that's that's probably the the deepest part of this is the box and then just some space for the wiring so unfortunately my camera stopped recording it but I went ahead and cut a mitre on the two side pieces that will sit like this and then in front of those will come my front piece like this And then I can house bits of wood on the back and the front of this part and uh, I'll have a thin piece that opens up for me to look in and actually work on the speakers if I need to or you know, fix a solder joint, whatever that needs to be done. So I've quickly just try tested the uh, speakers on the back and screwed them in just to see sort of what position I'm in to put a bit of wood at the bottom so I think I'm going to make this the top and then because I've got a little bit more room on the bottom than at the top of there only by a little bit and I think it's because of this protrusion but I think it should be alright So just off camera quickly because it was boring, uh, I cut a base piece, so now we can have the front on here like that, uh, that is this side here, and then this side right there, and that can all sit together, and then I'll have a, a top piece coming across there and then a bottom piece running along that way. So, just a quick update, my camera is literally on about 4%. So I'm just going to do this quick clip and then uh, put it on charge for a bit. But so far, all I'm doing is just positioning this on-off switch on the side of the speaker. So I'm just going to drill a hole and insert it. Uh, I need this because the on-off switch on the board is too small to put through a piece of wood so I'll just solder it onto the board and that will allow me to turn it on and off 
uh, I've cut a back strip uh, for the back part on the sides and that will start to enclose things then all I need to do is my hinged door mount the circuit boards down screw the speakers in, solder them up and then it will just be finishing off by painting and I also have to design the mechanism by which this will attach to my monitor right so when the camera was charging all I have done is I cut a back piece here I can stop that in I cut a back piece and then a, a top piece that fits in there and then I cut a small hole for the pole to fit through now I don't actually know how I'm going to stop it I tried to do these sort of clamps where it screws in but the hole is uh, too slippery to, to latch on so there is one on my computer at the moment but what I'm going to do is fix it all together with some nails and glue and then come back in a bit take it up to my room and see how the pole fits through and how I could stop it so my initial thoughts is just to put a piece of wood over it nail that in and it will just rest on top of the pole or maybe raise that up a bit and give it maybe an inch of pole inside so that it is a bit more stable on there but uh, yeah that, that's just a bit of an experiment part so I'm gonna quickly get up with the glue and the nails and then we'll be back after right so I'm gonna do a quick time lapse of me just gluing and nailing and then uh, I'll come back and talk after So it's late evening now, um, I have done a little bit off camera, uh, I started to paint the front of this, uh, pretty much in frustration that I couldn't get it done today, but uh, which was a bit silly of me, but it looks, it looks okay, uh, I had a few issues with this back part and the angles and I realised that now that I've put this back piece on here, I can't screw in down here for the speakers. But uh, I can just about get a screwdriver to it and do it up a bit, just enough to hold the speakers there. That's why the the, uh, the back hasn't gone on yet. Uh, but I did want a hinged mechanism that would lift up, so I could still see inside this part of the speaker to get to the wires, just in case I needed to. Uh, but I got a bit frustrated and... I sort of quit for the day and that's when I spray painted the front out because I was a bit bored-ish frustration and boredom set in so um, but I've come back out it's about let me see it's 20 to 11 in the evening and uh, I was getting frustrated about how I would mount the speaker to the pole uh, it's just a steel pole stainless steel uh, well, at least I think it is. And the speaker, uh, the 
screen mount goes over that and then it twists in so I tried to replicate the stop out of wood these are just roughs and uh, I really wasn't having any luck with it because uh, wood is too too fragile when you're pushing it out and as I was going out you can hear it just sort of slowly giving way and uh, this really wasn't working for me so I tried a bigger one and made it slightly bigger and that didn't work either uh, and then I made this thinking that the gap in between would allow me to screw into the middle and this was this was one step closer so the pole would go in there and then it would screw in what I didn't realise is it would just force this gap bigger and bigger so I came back down and I redid it and this one actually worked quite well this is just two hole saw holes a big one on the outside then I drilled the inside one and just put it down on the bench with two nails and then I drilled a hole in the side and I have a little machine screw and this works perfect it fits it doesn't slide up and down so now the pole can come through this hole and that will be sitting underneath so uh, it's a few days later I uh, had to go away for a bit and leave it and come back to it just to sort of de-stress a bit even though it's such a simple project uh, just a quick recap as to where we're at I painted the front out of frustration uh, but I've got sides, the front, the back and the bottom on uh, I have my stop collet that will go round the pole of my computer stand and today we're going to work on a lifting lid hopefully and uh, a sort of stand to raise it above the computer screen so now I have my uh, dual bevel piece it's a 45 on one side and a 45 on the other uh, obviously from the back it looks the same but that will sit across this angled piece here and act as a sort of door into it that will come up and over and open and I bought these small silver hinges and uh, I think they cost me a pound forty maybe so cheap hinges which is good I'm now going to get on to the top piece and then on to painting which will be part of the longest part of this just waiting for it to dry right so off camera just because it took a while I got this small strip and I was careful to take my time and dial it in and uh, it fits really snug which is good and then this dual bevel bit also fits flush now I've left a small gap I don't know if you see that, a small bit of play either side so that when I hinge this part it will open accordingly because if I overdid it it would it would obviously come down and hit the sides which I, I don't really want to happen because it will start to chip the wood so now I think we will route this top bit and make it flat and flush and then get on with putting the hinges on, getting the speakers in and then I'm going to paint the rest of it so uh, I used my crappy router table to use a top mounted bearing round a router bit I'm not sure what they're called but it's the one with the bearing on the top and the cutter at the bottom and just flattened out this top edge to meet these side pieces because it was only a few millimetres above and I didn't feel like using a table saw or anything I wanted to be a bit delicate so that's flattened now now all we're left to do is to attach the top piece and my access door at the back and that's the difficult challenge so the reason that's currently a challenge is because this top piece blocks the speakers from going in and it was a little bit negligent and put this bottom piece on to give the two sides a bit more stability but forgetting that I had to still screw in the speakers onto the front so I currently can't put this top piece in because that will block me from screwing in speakers 
So what I'm thinking is to put the speakers in with all the circuit boards, then tape up the holes from the front when I'm doing the painting. Uh, this circuit board will probably be placed about there. Uh, I'll just put some screws through these little mountain holes. And the second board will sit opposite over here. And then each speaker will be mounted there. So I didn't film this because I forgot. But I've just put some solder on the end of these wires. And all I'm doing is putting one on each side of the power switch to allow me to bypass it with my own switch. Oops, that's a bit of solder that I need to pick up and put down there. It should be fairly simple. So it's time to admit that I just did something very, very, very stupid. Um, I picked up this board, forgot that I hadn't plugged it into the mains, picked up the mains end with its little snappy connector, and forgetting that it was still plugged in, I attempted to insert the snap connector into it. My finger made contact on the bottom edge, where the mains solder is and it went straight into my hand and electrocuted me now I don't know if I do have that clip but if I do I, I will put it in but I did do something very stupid and I think it's good to admit when you made a mistake so if you are using any electrical equipment out there remember if you are fiddling with it make sure it's unplugged and not connected or to you or to anything you are touching in the process. Right, so I do have this working now. Uh, so I have this flicker switch connected to the board at its power point and it does work. So now I can load everything into the uh, thing into the box. Apart from this I need to re-solder this speaker back to its original connections. But other than that everything's ready to be screwed in, sealed up and painted. Right, so I've cut my uh, video up on my phone. If you haven't checked this video out, go and check it out now. I'll put a link in the description. It's my first video. I'd love if you could share some love and you know, give it a like and a view. Uh, it's just me cleaning up my shed. But if I switch on the speakers. I'm going to do about an hour of hell trying to clear this place up. back on so they work really well it's better sound quality than I thought I was gonna get and the switch works which I'm really happy about so now that I know the speakers work uh, I can work on the lid because that's what I needed to fit in to work on my parameters of where I could come to so now I can hinge now that I've got everything in I can set the things in place 
So now the top in and then we can get on to painting. So I've got my main top piece that I can just now slot in, get it in position. Now I'm not going to glue this piece because I won't be able to clean up the squeeze up. So I'm just going to nail it in place and that should be more than enough to hold it in. So I've marked out where they are. And then I'm just doing a really small pilot hole just to make it that little bit easier to screw in. And then once I've got the placement on the top piece, I can now put some screws into these. So after a struggle, I now have an opening hatch where I can access, you know, the volume rocker in here if it ever goes wrong, or if one of the wires comes off, or any anything like that, I can access and I'm not completely shut off now. The switch still works, I've got to take that out and we can get on to painting. So first things first is to mask and tape up the front face speakers. So I now have the front two holes masked up. Because uh, I painted the front before I don't really have to now. I'm just going to give it a quick spray over on the new holes and on the top. But the main part is I've covered that hole up and the two on the bottom. So I'm going to go outside just because uh, I don't really want to spray in here because I have no protection and uh, I'm just going to spray that, get it all done and leave it. So let's go. Right so all I'm using is this like Wilco multi-surface because it's only going to be in my bedroom and I'm not actually that worried about the front of it looking at all that. I mean I could go out, I had some... Um, rust-oleum paint before but I think as it is I think it's okay so I'm just going to spray this down uh, de-dust it with my air hose and then we'll get to painting I think we're good, I mean I'm not going for like the world's best paint, hence why I'm actually just scraping some off where it's, you know, starting to pull up and then putting some more on and uh, I'm really not that worried about, you know, it looking the best, it's just going to sit above my computer and yeah, so... I'm going to leave that to dry, I might transfer it into the shed right now, just on my hand, and I haven't painted the bottom yet, which I was going to do, I was going to extend this out and pull it forward, but I think I'll leave that, because the camera's about to die anyway, so unfortunately this is going to take one more day of just final, final prep work and getting this done. Right, so I'm up in my bedroom now, uh, this is my computer set up. There is a pole behind this screen, which you can't actually see, but it's too difficult to get you to see it. I have my base piece, but I didn't actually film that I made, but all it is, is a base, the small ring nailed into it, and uh, two sides, just to prop up the uh, top. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this in.
Well, I think I'm happy with that. Probably sit it forward of that a bit. Now, I wasn't going to fix these speakers down. But it might be a good idea now thinking of it. But we'll see how it goes. But yeah, uh, I'll come back in the next clip and I will hook it up to the computer if I can and play some sound for it. So right now I've just got my video from YouTube playing as I did earlier. Uh, I've got it plugged in, I've got it set up into my computer and with the flick of the switch and it's perfect uh, this one crackles a little bit when you turn it off but while it's actually playing sound it's perfect and they're actually so loud I was just thinking about maybe having to turn the audio down whilst I play the music so it doesn't blow out people's headphones but uh, yeah they really are what I wanted uh, they're quick, they're simple, if you've got the time, just find a pair of old speakers, tear them out, There's you don't even have to add the switch in, that was just what I wanted to do, and just build a box around them, that's literally all I've done here. So, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and come back next week for another cool project.